Hello everybody, it's Miss Tara from the Northwest Library and I'm here to share some of my favorite picture books. We're going to start here with A Little Bat Up All Day by Brian Lies. This is the author who wrote Bats at the Beach and Bats at the Library. Um, and this one is about Little Bat. And bats are nocturnal, so Little Bat should be sleeping uh, at night. But he decides he wants to see what daytime is like. So he decides while his brothers and his sisters and his parents all are sleeping that he's going to go out and see what daytime is like. And then he sees what he thinks is a friend up there, but it's actually a hawk. And Squirrel saves him. So, so this book is just about his adventures <laughs> throughout the day. There's some really funny moments and he is obviously very tired at the end of the day, but he has made some new friends. All right, a little bit more text in this book, um, probably for um, somebody who's a little better reader um, or for parents to read to your kids. So this is Little Bat, Up All Day. And then I have Puppy Bus. We have lots of kids going back to school or are back to school now, um, and they're riding the school bus. And this one is called Puppy Bus. And this is by Drew Brockington, okay? So this is about a little boy who's just moved to a new street with his parents and he's a little nervous um, and he gets on the bus to go to his first day of his new school and he's nervous because the teachers might be different and he'll have to make new friends and he won't know where the bathrooms are and he's really nervous but then he gets a big lick and he realizes all the kids kids on the bus are doggies. And he realizes he's on the wrong bus. He got on the puppy bus. So he gets to go to puppy school <laughs> and talk to the puppy principal. And uh, everything is strange. He has to learn how to roll over. Um, his math is woof plus woof. It's just kind of funny. So, cute book. Really like this one uh, called Puppy Bus. This is a new nonfiction series. It's called Really Wild Families. And I think I've seen two or three of these. There's Little Lion, Little Penguin, maybe a Little Alligator. They are in the nonfiction section. And it's the day in the life of a little lion. Okay, so what's great about this, these books or this series is there is a story about Little Lion and what he does throughout his day with his family. Okay, so there is a story, which is really nice. But then once you're done with the story, let me get to it, in the back of the book, there's information about tigers. Or lions, I'm sorry, about lions. So there's information about where they live, and there's even games in there that you can play, okay? Um, more about different kinds. Here's the white lion. So check out this series. Again, it's called Really Wild Families. Um, I've seen a couple so far, and they're really great informational books, but have that storybook element to them as well. So this is a counting book called The Zero Zebras, a counting book about what's not there. So I love the cover, fun book, great illustrations. Okay, um, I might have skipped a page here, yes. Really bright illustrations, which are always nice. I see one wallaby and zero zebras. Two tuna splish and splash and splash with zero zebras. So lots of uh, the same beginning sounds for a lot of letters. So zero zebras. Um, three thrushes fly high in the sky, but zero zebras. So a lot of those really great beginning letter sounds that your kids need. Um, and they'll be able to pick those out with you. So again, you'll have to see if there are any zebras 
in the Zero Zebras book, but I really like this one. This one is called Time to Fly by George Ella Lyon. All right, we have a little robin here, it looks like. And it's time for him to leave the nest. His sister and his brother have already left the nest. He's hungry, but his parents won't feed him until he leaves the nest. But he says, the nest is best for me. He feels safe there and comfortable. And he does practice his flying. He a little lift, a little lurch. Fly on over to my perch, says mom. You want a snack? Once you learn to fly over here, I'll give you a worm. So really great rhyming in this book. Uh, heart pounds, wing shake, first flight, piece of, no, piece of cake. So good rhyming skills in this book, which is another thing that um, children need as they're getting ready for kindergarten. Okay, here he is with his siblings. So again, we have Time to Fly by George L. Lyon. like this one a lot. This one is cute. This is called uh, A Picnic in the Rain. And you can see we have some slug friends here. And they're very, very excited. Or snail friends. They're very excited because it's supposed to rain today. The weatherman said it's going to rain. And that's what snails like to go on a picnic. They like when it rains. So they get all of their rain gear and all of their fun stuff together. And they get their picnic together. And they head out. They find a perfect spot and it stops raining. The clouds disappear, the sun comes out and makes the puddle sparkle. What a disappointment for Margot and Leo, which are our two kid snails. They really want to continue their day, but they need a rain. They need rain to get around and to enjoy their picnic. So this is a really good problem solving book because the two kids find a way for them to continue their picnic. Again, this is a picnic in the rain. This one's by uh, Corinne Delaporte. Love the illustrations in this one. This one's actually a little funny. This is the little good wolf um, instead of the big bad wolf. Um, and this wolf is a very good wolf. And his parents try and try and try for him to be a bad wolf and he just really struggles at it. Uh, the book is by Janet Stevens and Susan Stevens Crumble. Okay. Once upon a time in the deep, dark forest, in the big bad forest, there lived a family of wolves, but they were not happy. Our son is hopeless, grown Papa Wolf, and we've tried everything, moaned Mama Wolf. Time out, extra chores, no dessert, nothing works. He takes baths. He plays with piggies, he cleans his room, he brushes his teeth, and he even reads bedtime stories to himself. So they really want their wolf to be a bad wolf. So they send him to bad school. Lesson one, basic badness. Teacher, giant. So, uh, he meets lots of different teachers. I like this teacher here. And um, they try to teach him how to be bad, but in a lot of cases, he saves the day. Um, and he has some really mean teachers. It's just really fun. It's kind of, a, it's a fractured fairy tale towards the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. So highly recommend this one. And then my last one is Creepy Crayon. Now, if you remember Creepy Carrots, um, and then Creepy Pair of Underwear. This is the same author, Aaron Reynolds. And this one is about a creepy purple crayon. So Jasper Rabbit is having a hard time at school. He does not want to do his homework. He does not want to study, but he, then he finds the crayon. It's purple, it's pointy, it's perfect, and it's ready to, to do all of Jasper's schoolwork for him. The crayon gets some straight A's, the crayon does all of his thinking. The crayon starts to take over. Jasper might be ready to get rid of this creepy crayon, but is the crayon ready to get rid of Jasper? Creepy crayon. 
So just like the beginning of the story said, he's struggling in school. We like the dark pictures. And then he finds a perfect purple crayon, which, you know, finding a perfect crayon is really hard to do. And then he finally starts to get all of his homework right. And he starts to do good on tests. And uh, he draws the best pictures in class and starts winning awards. And he starts to get really uncomfortable and tries to get rid of the crayon. And sometimes the crayon just won't let go. So, excuse me. The next book in the Creepy series is Creepy Crayon. We've got books on the shelf right now you can come and check out at most of our locations. If you liked any of the books that you saw today, give us a call, go online, we'll get them reserved for you. I hope you have a very creepy day. Thank you.